Hello everyone, welcome to the Ranting Shop. It's me, Melissa, and I am in here to discuss the Never Ever Mets. It came on yesterday, and I'm eager to share some of my opinions on what I saw, because it gave very much ratchet, very much ghetto, very much low budget, and very much like an MTV reality show fighting i don't know it it wasn't giving what i expected it to give so let's go down the line and talk about each couple so the premise of this show is that a lot of these couples have been dating online for a long period of time the longest was 12 years and i think that was she and in my opinion I feel as if when they say dating, they're just using that to sensationalize the show to make people like really interested. But I don't think it was dating per se. I think it was more so keeping in touch, having a friendship and just living separate lives. And they were just curious about each other. So they decided, okay, let's see what this is gonna be but i don't think they really took each other seriously and i think the reason why people are so fascinated by them and the 12 years is that they're assuming it's a 12 year monogamous type of relationship and i don't think that's what it was because he's had a three-year-old in that interim and maybe another kid so it's not as if he's been single and talking to her the entire time. And that even brings into question does the nature of the relationships with which he had that three-year-old with. Was it serious? Was it something you did when you took a break from talking to Shay? Like, nobody has really exact, well expounded on that situation. But I'm just going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that the situation with the three-year-old and the 12-year gap before meeting is as a result of them maintaining a friendship and having separate lives and relationships. Unless we see further later on in the show. So what I wanted to make note of was the fact that, okay, she seems like a very nice person. I must say that. However, I feel like a lot of people looked at her and was like, she's not very attractive. Like, her teeth, the way her mouth is shaped is kind of weird. But I think she's a very nice person. And as long as he's attracted to her, that's all that really matters. My opinion doesn't matter when it comes to these people's relationship. He spoke about his insecurity and his fear of she not liking him. Now, I saw a lot of commentary of people being, like, almost confused. Like, he's, of the two, they're they're thinking he's the more attractive. So, because of that, they're like, how come you're the one who's scared that she doesn't like you? And out of both of you guys, you look the more attractive, like, the more attractive one. They were like, shouldn't that be her saying that? And... As I said before, I'm not going to critique these people's looks. Maybe he holds her to a very high standard and he sees more than looks in her. And that is what attracts him to her. It's all good. She also said, what if he doesn't like her? And she had no issues on that date. But what I will talk about is the dress that she chose to wear. I thought it was extremely inappropriate because... This is a guy you're meeting for the very first time. Yes, you guys are familiar with each other, but you guys are, are meeting for the first time. Why would you wear this dress where it's like a huge slit on either side? And then the upper half of the dress is like it's showing half of the boob cleavage. And it doesn't look like she was wearing any bra. So my thing is, if you're going to something like a park, like an amusement park, your butt is going to be exposed constantly. And there's going to be constant situations where you might unknowingly 
expose your intimate parts to people because of the way the dress is it's so revealing it's showing your bum because it's short it's showing half of your bum because it's the side the sides are exposed you're showing half of your boobs right because the sides of that are exposed and you're also not wearing any nipple patches because i see her nipple through the outfit it was just to me it was not it was day classy it wasn't a very classy outfit and it didn't to me if i was meeting shay for the first time i wouldn't have the best impression of her because it's like okay that's a lot for the first meeting but it's possible that he knows her personality and so it doesn't shock him that she'd wear something like that because he doesn't seem to be bothered by what she chose to wear. Now, Greg. Greg and Sienna. Sienna is really pretty. She was wearing the green outfit and they had the outing. They, they were a couple that were in the same city but haven't met each other in three months. Um, I mean, it's possible that different lives, especially busy lives, can make it so that it's an inconvenience, so to speak, to meet somebody you're just talking to on social media. And that's the thing people are not taking into consideration. It's the fact that they're looking at these relationships as serious when really I feel like it's just a pen pal that you finally meet and you want to see if that lasts. Or if that makes sense to get into a relationship with. Um, maybe Greg prioritized the work. Maybe Sienna also prioritized the work. And they just never found time to meet each other. I don't think it's as big of a deal as other people are making it out to be. Although I do believe that if they did prioritize their relationship. They would make a way to each other. Because they do live in the same city. It shouldn't be so difficult. But I just feel like they just didn't prioritize each other. And they figured okay we're going to meet on this show anyway. So let's just wait. And it could also be a production thing. Production probably also told them wait before meeting you know we don't know how long after they found out they're gonna be on this show you know we don't know how long it was so we don't know if they just they just mutually decided let's wait until the show to meet because it's gonna make for a better show like you're gonna see their facial expressions they kept their body language and see if they really like each other it, it it goes well for TV. And another thing Greg said was women like men that are hard to get. I have never in my years heard women say that they want a man to be hard to get. He sounds like he wants to be chased. He's giving metrosexual. It's, it's very interesting because... I've never heard a woman wanting to chase a man into liking her or wanting to wear him down into liking her. Like, to me, that's supposed to be the man pursuing the woman and the woman being hard to get. He get he got that all the way wrong. Like, I don't know where he lives his life, but it seems like he lives in an alternate reality. And he might be the type of man that wants to be chased. So I'm looking at him with a side eye okay because to be honest i don't know if he even really likes women now dominique dominique and the other woman i don't recall what her name was let's see the other woman's name is alexis so off the bat you could tell this couple is giving ghetto okay she mentions off the bat that Dominique has a temper. So she knows that about him. My thing about it is a lot of women, because their their lives are full of dysfunction and they lived in an environment where that was normal for a woman to be with a hot-tempered man. It was just something that everybody did. And if you saw her with a black eye, that was normal. If you saw her with a bruised lip, that's normal. You know, some people have normalized abuse, sadly. So she's probably thinking it's cute for a man to have a temper. Because a lot of women feel 
when they're in, they feel like love means possession and love means to put, to inflict physical harm on someone because in their twisted way of thinking, it's like that means the person really wants me. The person doesn't want to lose me. And in fact, that really just means that that person has a distorted sense of love and also the person inflicting the pain has issues with their temper and that is nothing to be praised about. Now, when I listen to Dominic speak on their relationship, it sounds as if that relationship is purely superficial. He was attracted to her just based on what she looked like. I don't think he really cares for her as an individual. I don't think he really cares for her as a person. I just think he sees her as a sexual conquest because that's what it sounded like um and then he meets her and then he says he's not attracted to her body i guess she wasn't as curvy as he thought and so on and so forth now i'm not gonna then go and criticize the way he looks but what i will do is say that to be fair Women know how to take pictures in particular angles to make them look curvier. I consider it a form of catfishing because that's not really how you look. But because of you putting one feet behind the other feet, it makes you look as if you have more hips than you really do. It makes it seem like you have more bust then you really do it makes it seem like you have more butt than you really do. And women know how to master attracting men. But I feel when what they fall short of is, first of all, who they're attracting may not be the best type of man, aka Dominic, because these types of men only want them for their bodies. And also, when they finally meet these men, and the men really see what they look like, the men are disappointed. You don't have as much hip as I thought you did. Your butt isn't flat, but you don't have any hips. And I feel like, not to criticize Alexis's body, but she really is not a very hippie woman. She has a big bust, but not a lot of hip. But she has a rounded butt. It almost looks as if she had fat put in her butt but not on her hip. It just looks a little weird to me. But yeah, he said he didn't like what he saw. But I didn't like how he treated her. The date, I, I wasn't really... I didn't think it was a good date for the first time meeting somebody. To me, the first time meeting after months... I would think you'd want to sit me down at a nice restaurant and we could talk. I don't want to be in compromising positions. I don't even really know you because what is three months? Three months is nothing. They're strangers, right? And instead of talking, you're bending me down, talking about arching my back and you're behind me and all these six worlds positions and we don't even know each other but she seemed to be all right with it and it just proves that men will do what you allow if you don't value yourself to a higher standard of a man having to get to know you before all these sexual things then you become a sexual content conquest you become sex right until you decide okay hey that's not what i'm trying to do that's not what i'm trying to portray to you but a lot of the time men love to take unspoken indirect forms of communication and use it as a fact instead of inquiring okay because you're coming across very sexual is that intentional or are you just like that type of person like you know, and what can I say? <clears throat> so she mentioned she doesn't like social men, men that have women all up in their faces or men that are all up in women's faces. And he was like, well, okay, well, if you're going to impose that rule on me, I'm going to also impose that rule on you. And 
throughout the show, he seemed to unravel and become this very jealous, insecure person that is not in control of their emotions. And she was very social when they got back to the house and she was friendly to all the men, all the women, very nice person, but very friendly. And I don't think he liked that because he's like, practice what you preach. You told me you don't want me up in women's faces. Why are you all up in these men's faces? But I feel like a secure man wouldn't even impose that petty rule. Like, okay, if you go dirty, I will go dirtier. That just seems to be extremely immature to me. So she's being social, commenting on different things, asking this guy to rap, ask mentioning these other guys woochie daddy shots in my opinion i feel like she definitely mentioned that way too much like that's not your business that's not your man focus on your man and deepen your relationship or whatever i it's okay to be social i have no issue with her being social but my thing about it is she was making too many too much commentary on other men and um, not that i'm using that this as a justification but I think that's what got Dominique annoyed and eventually it got to a situation where it seemed like they were playing, but I feel like he was really just exerting dominance. Like, don't play with me. Don't disrespect me. (laughs) And then for some reason, it just, by the flip of a switch, his personality, demeanor, everything just changed and he got violent pushing her violently wanting to hit her it was just all very disrespectful and um it was very difficult watching that because i don't think i've really seen this on tv to this extent this is the part that's giving love and hip-hop i wasn't expecting it And the sad thing about this is that no man really intervened. I could understand you're thinking they're play fighting. But then when she, he visibly pushed her really hard, you know, and somebody mentioned, oh, she fighting back. So you you don't expect that somebody would fight back when somebody physically tries to harm them. That's confusing. Yes, it speaks to maybe she had to fight a lot in her life. As I mentioned before, maybe that's what she's been privy to. It's abuse. So she's not, it's normalized for her. But I don't think anybody in that situation or scenario would necessarily walk away if a guy is hurting you. You would feel the need to defend yourself. And I feel like it also speaks to her having to fight her entire life and not being protected. I think she's a an unprotected black woman and she took it in her hands and she tried to protect herself, but she's no match for this big, tall man. You know, you see how easy it was for him to push her really far? This man is very strong. And when... Shay's man saw that he intervened and I don't even think he wanted to because this guy is tall he's bigger than everybody else and he has a temper you don't know what guys like that can do but I was just very disappointed that none of the other men stepped in to protect her and I think she mentioned production also not stepping in to protect her and I feel like that again stems to the fact that these people prefer making good TV than protecting their contestants. And I also made a separate video about this. I may drop it. I may not. We'll see. But let's move into Sienna and Brandon. I don't really have much to say about Sienna and Brandon yet. They have. They actually really didn't speak much about their relationship. So I actually don't know much about it. They've been dating for 10 months. He's in New York. Wait, she's in New York. He's in Florida. I'm going to wait to see what happens with that relationship. Now, Joanna and the guy. What is his name? Let's see. Joanna and Aaron. 
Joanna didn't seem to be very interested in him. I feel like off the bat, she was annoyed because prior to that date, I think he said he lost his ID and that already made joanna annoyed with him because i think what she's getting from him is very much child vibes like immature vibes. i feel like she feels like she's dating a kid and i don't think she has the patience to raise a man to raise a boy into a man so i feel like everything he does that is like a mistake is irritating to her and i feel as if he tried he set up wine for her, a charcuterie board. He tried to create this whole romantic atmosphere. But it just came off like he was pretending to be who he is not. And I feel like when you're meeting somebody after dating them for nine months and everything they do doesn't seem to be natural to them, it almost feels like you're not sure if that person is is a genuine individual or is it somebody that's been lying to me throughout this entire online relationship. And I feel like most of her irritation stems from him coming across like he's never dated before him coming across green like this is uncharted territory she's feeling annoyed because like why would you do something that or pick a date that you know you're not into or you're not good at like the whole salsa thing you don't know how to salsa dance you haven't danced since you was you were eight years old he made it seem as if He's been practicing because he knows she's a Latina. But for me, it just sounds like... <clears throat> it just sounds to me like... He was faking to appease her. And it didn't hit... Because I think a woman would prefer to see you in your natural element than for you to be faking things to please her. And you know nothing about what you're doing. I feel another situation is like, she doesn't want to lead. She's probably been in relationships where she's had to just take the leadership position. And when you've led for so long, you don't want to lead anymore. Maybe she's the first sister. Maybe she has had responsibility of taking care of her siblings. Maybe she's been the the second mom. She doesn't want to be in a leadership position. Maybe that's her job, uh, her career. Maybe she has to manage. She doesn't want to do that anymore. She doesn't want to do that in her romantic life. And for her to come across a guy where she also is having to lead, it must really be irritating to her. And I feel like a lot of people didn't give Joanna a lot of grace. They felt like, well, why didn't she just accept and appreciate what this man was doing for her? I mean, she did. She did give him a 6 out of 10. I mean, a lack of appreciation would have been a 0, a 1, a 2. But she gave him a 6. But I understand her frustration. Don't be fake. Be who you really are. Don't act as if you <laughs> can be a certain way and you're not that way. You know what I'm saying? Be yourself. Now, I, I can't even trust you because I don't even know who you are. So, let's move on to Aaron. Aaron and Diamond, that's the last couple I'm speaking of today. So apparently, they've been in a relationship for five years. So the way they've, they spoke on that date, <sighs> it appears that that relationship was semi-serious because it even led to some proposal. But he went and proposed to somebody else. 
and she was upset she doesn't trust him now she doesn't even want to forgive him she said maybe but then she's coming across the table and holding his hand she's giving mixed signals this is where you watch people's actions as opposed to what they say because if that was a deal breaker or if that bothered you so much you would have left that relationship a long time ago you still there five years later after he embarrassed you and you're holding his hands after telling him maybe so the holding of his hands means you completely accept it you forgive him because why hold his hands you know it appears that later on in their relationship on this show she's gonna struggle to accept him and his mistake in quotation marks so we'll see how that goes chris chris and sandia Chris only spoke about their sexual chemistry and the fact that they've they've been sexting. And the fact that he was comfortable to do that in the introductory part of the show just leads me to believe that all he sees is Sandi- in Sandia is sex. Furthermore, the unfortunate thing is I think people was all mesmerized and swooped away by the plane ride that he the date that they did which was a very nice date it was probably the best date out of all of the other dates but i think some women seem to have let that cloud their judgment and assume that chris was this amazing guy from the time chris came off the bat and said that sexual chemistry and the sex thing and all these things i was already like this guy only sees this woman as one of many like and he seemed to only prioritize sex so to me it didn't give serious it gave oh let me see she's gonna sleep with me that's what it gave this couple have been dating for three months and he seemed very nice i guess until he started speaking to the guys and was like He's think he's kind of looking down on lover boys, and I guess that's what the guys call simps. And he talking about he's a, he has several women, and him and Cynthia are not serious. He's not Cynthia's man, and Cynthia is not his woman, and he will basically love bomb you and not talk to you for a week. This man just plays games. This man is a game player, and me being Sandia listening to this i would take that as my cue to leave because this guy will just waste your time this is beyond disrespectful right you go from a perfect date to eavesdropping on a guy basically telling other guys that he doesn't really care for you like that and you're you're replaceable that's crazy i mentioned that he has trust issues because in his mind he feels as if he needs to get a woman first before the woman the woman gets him almost like that avoidant type of personality that i spoke of with alexis it's like these people feel as if other people will hurt them first so they do the hurting first they want to be in control of who hurts who right and it's never gonna be them that that ends up hurting so they're gonna hurt people at the first chance they get and Sandia is eavesdropping, listening. And then all the men are like, leave, leave, go away, move. And I'm like, wow, this, this is like disrespectful. And Chris is very disrespectful. Like, anyways, so far, I am not really interested in many of the couples. I don't know much about Greg and Millie. To be honest, is it Greg and Millie? Let's see. Let's go one on one. Let me give my assessment. Alex and Dominic, they should be off the show next week. Sienna and Brandon, don't know much about them to form an opinion yet. Sandia and Chris, absolutely not. Separate, never see each other again. This man is not ready to be in any committed relationship and he doesn't respect Sandia. She and Josh seem to be the most into each other, to be honest. 
and I know a lot of people are criticizing Shay's looks, but Josh doesn't seem to be too even a little bit upset about it. So I'm rooting for them. Joanna and Aaron, absolutely not. A lot of people are saying that Aaron is coming across very much gay and that he doesn't really like women. I also see it, to be honest. It just seemed like he's doing this as an experiment. Like this is the first woman he's ever gone on a date with. Like that's what it's giving. It's giving I'm not used to dating women. Diamond and Aaron H., um, I just feel like she's not going to be able to get past the betrayal of what he did. And I feel like they're going to always have to go back and readdress it, go back and readdress it. And I just, I'm already exhausted by that relationship. A lot of people are saying Diamond is not a girl's girl. I don't think that that's the case. I feel like certain women at a certain age, they don't want to share beds with other women. Like, we could be cool, we could be friendly, but I'm not sharing any bed with you. And I don't consider that not being a girl's girl pussy. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about the couples again. Like, subscribe, and see you guys next time. Bye-bye.